Rightio, we won't um, we won't hold up for too long. Those naughty people out there will get their way in here in a short period. Um, so our next speaker this morning um, is Jason Condon. Jason has more than 25 years experience teaching and researching soils. His research portfolio includes projects on fertiliser management, carbon sequestration, nitrogen cycling, salinity management, and the formation and management of soil acidity. His current role as soil research officer at New South Wales DPI is focused on a series of projects that seek to optimise acid soil management in the southern New South Wales zone. Um, so Jason's topic today is managing soil acidity in the cropping zone, and um, welcome Jason. Thanks Jeff. Uh, thanks for having me and uh, thanks for everyone for coming along. So I just want to uh, acknowledge support there from uh, Helen Burns and uh, Gwandi Lee. So I've learnt uh, many things from those two people. I'm very fortunate to uh, work with them in this space. Uh, and they have uh, many decades of experience that uh, I've been able to, uh, to gain some wisdom from. So what I, uh, what I wanted to do today was talk about um, acidity and understanding that you, know, you guys know uh, about it, you uh, have an idea of how it should be managed. And um, so I'm going to start with where we currently are where we need to be, and then how do we get there? So I guess to summarise my talk, I'm asking or stating that we need to make a change in our management. There needs to be a paradigm shift from what we're currently doing to uh, a new form of management. So in our current management, we know we've got an acidity problem if we sample in uh, 0 to 10 centimetre soil samples, which is standard sort of practice. Uh, maybe some people are doing the 10 to 20 centimetre layer below, but they're doing 10 centimetre interval sampling. Uh, and they'll be looking at uh, trying to get the, the pH from that and maybe aluminium percentages as well. Based on those soils tests, uh, lime will be applied and producers are deciding to apply lime once the pH gets below 4.8 in calcium chloride, and that's because once the pH is, is um, below 4.8, that's when aluminium, aluminium starts to come into solution and becomes toxic to plants. And so it's well known, if we can keep the pH above 4.8, you don't have aluminium and you don't get plants getting hammered by acidity so much. It's not the whole story, but it's a big part of that story. Uh, so below 4.8 is when people start to lime. Talking with growers and advisors, sometimes that's as low as 4.5. When people get to 4.5, that's, that's when they pull the trigger on lime. Um, so it's within that, within that range. The amount of lime that's applied uh, is enough to get rid of that aluminium. And so getting a pH above 5 and so people often go to 5.2 because that gets you away from 4.8 and it gets you a, fair, you know, a few years of agricultural production which will acidify back down to below 4.8. Uh, so you're getting a little bit ahead of the acidity. The amount of lime that's required to do that is often a rule of thumb. So uh, you talk to people and everyone's familiar with the sort of 2.5 tonne to the hectare or a tonne to the acre uh, sort of numbers that get thrown around. So that's a rule of thumb. Or it might be from uh, an ag factory or um, um, uh, th that comes from the, what was then the Department of Agriculture and now DPI. The table hasn't changed. Uh, and so basically we're using a soil test value for cation exchange capacity as a surrogate for buffering capacity. Uh, and then this is how much lime you'd have to apply to get from a starting point to 5.2. Again, so everything was targeted at just liming to get rid of uh, aluminium. And so that's, that's our standard practice. What's on the screen there is what most people are doing if they are managing acid soils. And I know, you know there are variations around there, I know, but that's, that's a generalisation as, a, as a most, sort of, most people would be doing if they are managing their asset soils. 
Whilst I'm on that, whilst that table's up there, I'll just point out that all of this is created from research through the years that, um, that was done literally decades ago, two, three decades ago, and lime was applied and then mixed into the surface soil. So well incorporated, because at the time there was lots of incorporation, lots of tillage back then. And so in, in a lot of cases, the trials actually incorporated lime with rotary hose. So they put the lime on and incorporated with the rotary hoe to 10 centimetres. And then those results created this table. So the thing that should be in your head now is no one rotary hoes lime in, and a lot of people are surface applying lime. So if you're calculating a liming requirement from this table that assumes that it's being mixed into 10 centimetres and you're surface applying, does that actually, do those two things relate? And so some people talk about a lack of response from lime. I often wonder, is that because it's sitting on the surface and hasn't actually worked in? All right, so if that's the current management, where's it gotten us? So what's the outcome of that? And so I'll show you some graphs. So we've got soil depth here in centimetres, soil pH and calcium chloride, four to six along, along the bottom here. So you'll, you'll, you'll get familiar with these sort of graphs, got a few of them. And so um, this is work from uh, Helen Burns and Mark Norton, who went out and surveyed a bunch of soils, a bunch of paddocks from growers that were producing uh, grain legumes, so pulse crops. And so by that nature, by that purpose, they actually selected people who think they don't have a soil acidity problem. And one of the reasons they think they don't have it is because they have limed. It's a history of liming. So when you sample that soil, in five centimetre intervals, you get these sort of curves. And so the, this is what we call a stratification of soil pH. And we can see here there are these little layers of acidity, which we will call uh, acid subsurface layers. So not subsoil. Subsoil happens down here off the graph. This is subsurface. So just underneath the top few centimetres, you get these acid layers, these acid uh, subsurface layers. And so these two lines, um, this one represents soils that have been limed within the last five years, and this one is, uh, has been limed for more than five years, okay? So past liming. And the thing that really sticks out there for me is that these liming events, whilst they may have shifted pH in the surface, have really done nothing below 10 centimetres. So the lime is having a larger impact in the top five centimetres, where it's being applied, and especially where people are using uh, minimum till, or even, even when they are incorporating and using speed tillers, they're not actually getting the lime very deep. And so the consequence of that is that the acidity is still there. We've still got these acid layers, and this is quite acid, so that's like 4.4 or 4.3 there, and, and this one, you know, that's like 4.6. So aluminium's in the system and, and there to impact on, on uh, plant growth and microbial activity as well. So acidity is still a problem. So these growers spent the money. They think they've, they've, they've done the right thing and they have, they have done the right thing, but they've still got the problem. Um, okay, so these acid layers are still there. They don't know they have a problem, and that's a problem, right? So we need to address that. So we've got to uh, work out how to identify these acid layers. And then once, we've, once we identify we have them, well, what do we do about them? Because our current management is not addressing them. So we need to change what we're doing. So that graph again, same graph, and I'll just point out that with our current sampling of 10 centimetre intervals, that, that line, if you sample that in the field in a, as a 10 centimetre uh, interval, its pH would come back at 4.6, and you'd go, okay, that's not very good, it's, you know, I might need to re-line that. But you're not aware of this acidity lower down, okay, so we need to sample below 10 centimetres. And then this other graph, uh, other line, it's got a pH of 5.3. Now, if you had a 0 to 10 sample of 5.3, you don't think you've got an acidity problem at all if you're liming just to get rid of aluminium. But you do. You very much do. In fact, you, you have it even here in the 5 to 10. You definitely have it down here. So this is where we're sort of saying, 
okay, well, maybe our 0 to 10 sampling is failing us in our identification. And so that leaves us with the question, well, what's the best method to, to find them? So we did this piece of work, and what we did was sample pro, um, profiles in two and a half centimetre intervals. And I'm not saying that's what you should do, I'm saying that's what we do, because we don't get out much. So we did that to find out where these layers are, to really get the definition of them. So this x-axis is the mean um, pH of a 10 centimetre sample. So that's our, that's our soil test result if we do a 0 to 10 centimetre sample, right? That's the pH that will come back. The y-axis is because we've sampled in these two and a half centimetre intervals, which layer, what is the pH of the most acidic layer, right? So of our 10 centimetres sampled in two and a half centimetre intervals, what's the pH of the most acidic two and a half centimetre interval, okay? So if you look at a one-to-one -one line through that, if our data points fall on that line, it means that our 0 to 10 sample is finding the most acidic layer. And it's giving us a, a number that is representative of what a root would see as the most acidic layer. And when we do that for a 0 to 10 sampling, we get that. And so the thing that you'll notice is you hardly ever are you anywhere near that line, that one-to-one -one line. So you're always getting it wrong you are not identifying the most acid layer. So in this case, you're getting a pH of six, which you'd be thinking that's awesome, but in reality, they're in the top 10 centimetres, there's a layer in there that's got a pH of like 4.3, which could easily limit production, would certainly influence uh, rhizobia, you know, uh, symbiosis with a legume. So that's a, that's a problem. The tragedy of that to me is someone spent the money to soil sample, and they, don't, they haven't actually identified the biggest problem for, for them. So, well, what if we sample in five centimetre increments instead? And so this is the same, same soils. If we do that, this is the, the naught to five centimetre layer, and you can see we're much closer to this dotted line. So it's doing a fair job of actually identifying uh, the most acidic layer, especially down here where it is quite acid. A bit of variation up here at a high pH. I, get, I sleep at night knowing that that's there because it's not going to hurt me too much. Five to 10 centimetres, we're, we're doing really well. We are almost on that line. So this is saying that if you want to identify if you have subsurface acidity in the top, this is top 10 centimetres, a five centimetre depth, depth increment in sampling will find you those layers. Okay, so you spend the money on the sampling and you actually find the problem you're trying to find, which is a bang for buck pretty good. Now, I'll also tell you that that's true from lower down. So we're sort of, because we, we know, and you saw the graph before, that these acid layers go below 10 centimetres. They're often in the 10 to 15 centimetre layer as well. So we're saying top 20 centimetres in five centimetre intervals to measure pH. Now, some of you are thinking, bugger me, that's going to be expensive. You don't have to measure everything. You're trying to find acid subsurface layers, so you measure pH. You sample and you ask for pH to be analysed, and that's not expensive to do. So we can find it. There's a method to find it, sampling in five centimetre intervals. How do you deal with it? Radio. So we've done work, understanding that there are acid zones lower down, often lower than the depth that we're cultivating lime into if you do incorporate. So one of the questions is, right, okay, well, let's just place lime in those layers directly. So uh, we did work, Gwondi Lee led the project. Uh, we had designed equipment built by DPI that actually ripped the soil and injected liming agents into the acid layer. And we trialled lime, we trialled organic matter, reactive rock phosphate and magnesium silicate, dolomite, there was a bunch of different things that we tried. So to show you what the impact was of that with lime, um, zero to 35 centimetres depth, four to five and a half pH calcium chloride. So the data looked like this. So here's our, here's our acid subsurface layers, the most acidic layers. In this case, is uh, between five and, and sort of 20 centimetres. 
quite acid, about 4.3-ish. And then if we lime the surface, then yeah, lime on the surface increases pH in the top five centimetres, does bugger all below that, right? And that's, that's with some incorporation. And when we deep place lime, we do actually address, we, we can change the soil pH. So that works. But the but is we had a 50 centimetre row spacing and this change only happens in the row. So you've got an awful lot of land in, the, in between those rows that you haven't done anything to. And as a result of that, we didn't get this spectacular yield responses because there's an awful lot of acidity still in that soil. Okay, this sort of thing's expensive to do. So there's a, it works, works in changing the soil chemistry. It's expensive, but it doesn't change the whole soil. So I would class that as not overly effective, not necessarily a, a, an answer for us. But it's a reminder that if acidity gets really bad and you are only left with options to deep place, it's expensive and maybe not as effective as you hope. So this is not a good place to end up. We've got to address acidity another way. So then we said, rightio, well, rather than build machinery, let's use the machinery that's already in, in the farmer's machinery sheds. And so this was work done by an honor student of mine, uh, Tom Price uh, at CSU, uh, and he was looking at prilled lime. So can you use prilled lime in the drill row, right, so through an air seeder, um, and how does that, to, to into that acid layer, is that as effective as a broadcasting lime and, and mixing it in? So that was his comparison. So soil depth of 25, pH from four to seven and a half. So the control looked like that. So you, again, you can see these acid layers and I'll just give you a little asterisk here. No, this was on soil not that far from us on the experimental for DPI farm, one of the best soils in the region. And it's got this nasty acid layer that people don't know about if they soil sample in 0 to 10 centimetre intervals. Okay, so that's, that's quite bad, like 4.4 at its worst. You don't know you have it. So that's the control. Because he was mixing lime in, that was, that was like the standard practice, he had a control mix. So what if you just incorporate, but you don't actually add lime, and that's what happened there. And you'll note that the pH drops a little bit in the surface and increases a little bit here, and that's because the higher pH of the surface got mixed in. So just mixing with even adding lime, you change pH, because you move this, the alkali bit further down. When you added lime, it increased uh, soil pH to the depth of incorporation. Now, we thought, and Tom thought, that we were incorporating to a, about 10 centimetres, and this is something that we see all the time um, when you talk to growers about who have incorporated lime. You say, to what depth? And they say 10 centimetres or 12 centimetres or five, seven centimetres, whatever. It will always be an overestimate, right? So that's true for us. We thought we got it to 10 you only see the pH change at maybe seven and a half. So the lime never goes as deep as the, the deepest tip of your tillage implement because of the way things mix. So lime worked, right? So that got, got us from an acid bit up to here, but it left us with this acid, we still got an acid layer, which would still be limiting, uh, in this case, it was a pulse crop and it did, it did impact on root growth. The calciprile, as I said, was uh, ripped in, so, so ripped in with a cedar, and so we had a ripped control, so ran the cedar through, but no liming agent went through, and that's what happened, so it looks pretty much the same as the control. And then when calcipril went in, we did, get, um, we did get an increase at the depth of placement, but we didn't get it deep enough, we literally couldn't get it deep enough to get all of this acidity, but it was pretty effective at increasing the acid where we put it increasing, sorry, in decreasing the acidity where we put the calciprol. So this, this was okay. This is evidence that we can address subsurface acidity if it is in reach with our, our uh, cedars. With calciprol, or a prilled lime product, we use 300 kilograms per hectare. So it's an expensive product, but we didn't use heaps of it. The lime that you see there was two tonnes of, of lime per hectare. So on an economic basis, it was roughly about the same cost to, to do that. But within one year or within the year, we got this amelioration. So that's a winner, I think, right? 
But again, it only ameliorates the acidity in the row, which is okay if you're a continual cropper, but if you're on a mixed farm and you're gonna go into a pasture rotation, again, there's still an awful lot of land in there that has not been ameliorated. Now, those of you who are signed on are thinking, okay, well, I can use calcium to get deeper. I can use surface application at the surface to get you know, the whole, um, more of the area for going into pasture phases. And that's probably a great way of thinking. And we're testing that out now. Rightio. I guess one of the ways before getting to banding lime in was, well, let's just put it on the surface and give it time and hope that it gets down. So rely on lime, lime movement. Now, some of you will have an opinion on that and some of it, will, most of you would say probably two things. One is uh, you need a lot of time and you have to have high rates of lime. Now, when you go looking at the evidence for that, you find work that was done here like 30 years ago, um, locally by uh, Mark Conyers, Brendan Scott. So we've got uh, soil depth down to uh, 16 centimetres here soil pH 4 to 6.5 along the x-axis. And what they did is they applied lime at three rates, so zero, a control, two tonnes, which is to get rid of that aluminium, and eight tonnes. And they mixed that in, again, with a rotary hoe, and then they grew subclover on it. And then they came back five years later and sampled. And this is what they found. So the control didn't have lime added, it looked like this. So we've got this stratified pH again. And this little eye is the depth that the incorporation got to, the depth that the tillage went to. Okay, so after five years, after mixing with the rotary hoe, this stratification forms, and that's what it looked like. Two tonnes of lime, oh, and I'll just point out, so it's still acid, all right, this is still a problem. Two tonnes of lime applied on the, on the surface and mixed in with the rotary hoe, changed the pH down to the depth of incorporation, but it didn't do much below that. Uh, okay, and so that's fine. The lime worked. We've got pH up here closer to five. And so liming to remove aluminium, so this two tonnes was to get, get us on average up around five, 5.2. It did that, but only to the depth of incorporation. The alkali, the bit that increases pH, doesn't move deeper than where you put it. That's what that shows. And that's very true, everything we've seen supports that. Right, so eight tonnes, this high rate of lime, what did it do? At, at eight tonnes of lime, you got increases in pH below the depth of incorporation, like four centimetres or more below the depth of incorporation. So unfortunately, what people took away from that work was if you want lime to move, you want the alkali to move deeper, you've got to use high rates. That's what everyone ran with. What the paper says and what actually happened is what that eight tonnes did, it got the pH up over five and a half. Now, when the pH goes up over five and a half, the breakdown products in that lime, one of them is soluble and will move. Okay, so over five and a half, that alkali moves. Under five and a half, that alkali just gets consumed at where it's created. And that's why it doesn't move down here at our two tonnes, because we never actually got it up over five and a half. At eight tonnes, it got up over five and a half and we got alkali movement down. Right, so the key, th key part of that is, it's not the rate of lime that matters, it's the pH that you're at and the pH that you're going to. If you want lime to move down, or the liming effect to move down, then you have to have your pH over five and a half. And our current management practices don't get us there. So the people that are spending money on lime and doing good things to control acidity are only ever dealing with the acidity where they're placing the lime, okay? So it's not a lot of lime. If you're already at, say, 5.3, it's not a lot of lime to get over five and a half, okay? Now, why this matters? So I wanna show you some work that was done uh, on the project that Guandi worked on. And uh, so I'm gonna show you here, pH now on the Y axis and years of a trial, long-term trial on the X axis. 
And I'm going to show you data that uh, shows us a 0 to 10. So they, they, didn't, strat they didn't do 5 centimetre sampling because they didn't know uh, when they started. 0 to 10, and then the next layer down, 10 to 20. Now, from a bunch of liming trials uh, done by the same people that worked on, on this particular trial, we know that if you lime, based on the current practices, liming to get around 5.2, agriculture will reacidify that soil and you'll get down to 4.8. That's a trigger to re-lime. Lime again, get up over you know, 5.2, acidification, re-lime. So you've got these sort of maintenance limings, right? So that's what good current practice would be. The problem with it is because that lime, we're not getting over five and a half, we're not, a, we're not actually moving any alkali down. And so the pH of the 10 to 20 actually slowly decreases because it's acidifying. So we've got a problem. In this case, you've still got acidity lower down, production limiting acidity, and it's still there and your current practice isn't doing anything about it. Although you might have a warm, fuzzy feeling because you've applied lime and you could be sampling in 0 to 10 and those numbers might be going up, but you've still got these acid layers. Now, the work um, at the master trial showed that when, when that target is set to keep your pH above five and a half, so an initial liming to get up over five and a half, and then you use five and a half as the trigger to re-lime, when you do that, the pH in the 10 to 20 goes up. And on, on that trial, it went up about 0.9 units over 18 years. Now, some people, I've spoken to this, well, that's a bloody long time, but it's improving. And so if you could snap your fingers and deal with your soil now, and it didn't have the pH in the 10 to 20, it was one unit higher now than what it is now, because someone made a good decision 20 years ago, you'd, you'd get on that bus. So this, that was a 3.7 tonne liming event. Okay, 3.7 tonne liming event. It was incorporated in to 10 centimetres, but these ones were just surface application of like 1.5 to 1.6, 1.8 tonnes of lime. Okay, so this is the evidence that our five and a half, keeping five and a half as our um, getting pH above it, and then once the pH drops and gets to five and a half, you re-lime, you do good things for your 10 to 20 centimetre layer. And if you don't do that, it's going to keep on acidifying, and then eventually, you know, deep placement might be your only option to get quick returns. So we've got to, for our new management, if you've got acid subsurface layers and you want to do something about them, maintain the pH above five and a half in calcium chloride. Easy thing to say, how do we get there? So we've, we're engaged in a bunch of work at the moment um, with some uh, great collaborators. We've got money from National Land Care Program um, and we're setting up trials or have set up trials where all these red dots are. There are others, but these specific ones I want to talk to you about. So this work is basically designed to find out what is the most effective way to apply lime to reach our target pH. And so there are replicated trials. They all have controls. The size varies. In the, this, this is actually a picture of one of our smaller ones where um, the plot width might be a bit over four metres and they're 50 metres long. They go right up to being air cedar width and a couple of hundred metres long on farm with farmers doing it all, or commercial lime spreaders. So um, different scales. We've got a lime to pH 5.2, so what common practice would be now. And then we've got, well, liming to 5.9. So let's lime above five and a half, get to 5.9 and let time acidify us down. Once we get to five and a half, we'll re-lime to go back up, okay? So this is our, our best practice to try to get the situation where we'll get alkali moving down to address subsurface acidity uh, lower in the profile. So they're our common treatments, they're in all of our trials. And then we have treatments that are specific to the farming area and the types of enterprises that are run in those areas. And so we have treatments that will lime to this higher rate. So if, if, you, if you're only going to surface apply because of you know, perennial pastures or topography erosion risk is high if you're going to incorporate and you're relying on surface application only, 
Then going back to that ag fact table, 0 to 10 centimetres, making a liming recommendation based on a 0 to 10 centimetre layer, knowing full well you're never going to incorporate that lime into 10 centimetres, well, it makes sense that you'd put on less because you're only ameliorating a little bit of soil. And so that's what this is. This is, let's hit the same target, but let's only put on enough, assuming that we're only gonna really play around with the surface five centimetres, right? So we'll end up using less lime, but probably applying it more often. Okay, so there's a sweet spot. Lime doesn't dissolve just by itself. It needs acid to dissolve it. So we need to have our pH above five and a half to get alkali to move, but we don't want it so high that the lime won't dissolve. So there's a sweet spot somewhere in there, and I would say that it's somewhere between five and a half and six and a half that we want to be having our lime. Any additional lime in there over that will just sit there, it won't dissolve. So this might be a winner for us. And I understand there's application spreading costs. That's going to be the, that's going to be the big difference between this and that. But let's find out. That's what the purpose of this research is. Where incorporation can occur, we've got treatments that do that. Um, and so it, what incorporation does, it actually gets you a head start. The depth of incorporation changes the pH to that depth of incorporation, giving you a head start. And if as long as all, all of that soil that's been incorporated, the limes that have been mixed in, is above five and a half, then there's excess alkali to move down, right? And then we've got this once in a generation um, treatment, which is basically saying, right, well, let's look at the profile. Let's look at how much acidity is there. Let's put on surface apply the lime to address that acidity and let's really incorporate it in. So understanding that no one wants to incorporate soil every year, let's just do it once in this generation. Get rid of the acidity that's there and then maintain, using surface applications, um, the pH so that the alkali movement stops those acid layers reforming. So that's what, that's what we're doing with this. It's serious bloody tillage, um, but we've got those treatments in the ground as well. So in all those experiments, we're examining the liming effect, the depth of um, lime movement. We are looking at rates of acidification and reacidification. So a lot of that work that, we ba that has been done is decades old. We've got farming systems now that no one actually knows how fast they're, they're acidifying. So we'll be looking at that. Uh, and we're looking at the production gains that are possible as well. Um, rightio, is it worth doing? So. When you talk to people, everyone has an opinion on this, whether lime pays or is worthwhile doing, is it a good investment? When you go looking for the literature on that, uh, I want to show you, this is all work that was done uh, east of here, but you've got location, or east and north, location, enterprise, response to lime. So this is a, a production gain of a lime plot versus a control that didn't have lime. Gross margin, but the gross margin is set in time of when the work was done. And this is a problem for us. And the people that say alignment doesn't pay, their ideas are stuck in time because they're thinking of work that was done when commodity prices were very different to what they are now. Rightio, so just flying through this. Here's a trial, went for, um, this was that same long-term trial that I showed you data from. So perennial, um, uh, sheep grazing on perennial pastures. Rough, roughly, on average, four DSC extra, and back then, $25 um, gain in gross margin, okay? So here's cattle, 16% more beef production, 90 bucks uh, per hectare more. Um, Bone along, so two, two and a half DSC extra, almost six if you applied lime and then put super on every year. Uh, but here, they lost money. Now they lost money because when they were drought affected, they didn't remove stock, they supplemented fed it and then costed that feed out and put it on the, on the tab. Okay, so that's why that happened. And uh, back then, you didn't have the commodity prices you do now. So work done by Matt Lischke uh, in a similar area, Lagan. So he's got three DSE extra on his lime plots and it's making him 180 bucks extra every year because the value of sheep and sheep product. And so his comment, his great comment is, what liming did for you there was actually gave you the capacity to carry more stock to cash in on the good commodity prices. Okay, so in summary, the current practices 
are not actually addressing the deeper problem. 10 centimetre sampling is a bit of our problem. It doesn't actually identify where those acid layers are. Five centimetre layers do. If we want to address subsurface acidity, then we've got to get our pHs up over five and a half to allow that alkali to move down to where it's needed. And we should be setting our re-liming trigger at five and a half. So we don't want to get to the situation, which is our current situation, where we, we get a production loss and then apply lime. We need to stay ahead of our acidification. Um, and soil testing, monitoring what our soil pH is doing is a really key part of understanding what your management is doing. So you've got a soil test to manage the soil properly. All this work involves a bunch of collaborators, which are a great value to work with, and, um, and I'll just acknowledge their input into what, we did, what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Some great work happening in that, in that space. Um,